Wolf. This video is brought to you by MacPaws Clean My Mac X, the ultimate way to optimize your Mac. Righto, tell you other champs. Today we're going to find out what is going in the next MacBook Pro 13, 14, when's it coming out? And when's the next refresh of the MacBook Pro 16? I'm also going to give you my long-term review of the 16-inch MacBook Pro. The good, the bad, the ugly. But anyway, let's start off with the MacBook Pro 13 or 14. What is it? According to someone who seems to have a finger on the pulse at the moment on Twitter, John Prosser. Prosser? I butchered the name, but anyway, you should follow him if you like Apple stuff because he seems to be coming out with a lot of leaks at the moment. Now, apparently the MacBook Pro 13 is coming out next month, so that's May. The model name is J223, and from what it looks like, it's just going to be an update to the current version with the new keyboard and, of course, Intel 10th generation CPUs. This MacBook Pro 13 is going to be refreshed in May and then maybe at WWDC in June, they might be able to drop in a 14 inch display into the same sort of chassis. Well, they could do that if they, you know, shrink the bezels there. And this would be the mini LED display. To me, that doesn't make sense. Bring out a 13 inch next month with, yes, a new keyboard, new Intel Ice Lake CPUs, or will they be Tiger Lake CPUs? Because everybody's testing Tiger Lake CPUs at the moment. So it's a good chance it might be Tiger Lake CPUs, which will mean they're quad core, usually a 28 watt part. But what's good about Tiger Lake is the graphics are the best integrated graphics you're gonna get. They're like 20% faster than the current Iris Plus graphics on Ice Lake CPUs, and they're even faster than Ryzen integrated graphics. So it's going to be a big deal in terms of CPU bump. Even if it got the Ice Lake CPUs, it's still a good bump from what the last MacBook Pro 13 is because the graphics are that much better. Thermal should be better. Battery life may be a little bit better as well. The new keyboard, Magic Keyboard, 100% it's going to have that, but we'll probably keep the same display according to John Prosser and that's due next month. So a couple of months later at WWDC, they'll just uh, drop in a 14-inch display into the same thing. I don't know about that, but I do expect it will have a mini LED display at some point. Now, when it comes to the MacBook Pro 16, there's not really much they can do with this. The big thing that's going to be coming is the 16-inch, the mini LED display. So it's going to be an XDR display, same with the room at 14-inch. So we're talking mini LED, probably a thousand nits of peak brightness, HDR, so it'll be rebranded XDR, and that's the big killer feature with the new MacBook Pro 16. In terms of CPU and GPU, yes, it will go up to the Intel 10th generation CPUs. Big deal. Like, seriously. They've already been benchmarked compared to the last versions, the 9th generation or the current ones now. Really, it is not that much difference. Seems to be around that sort of 10% difference on the CPU. They're not adding an extra two cores like, you know, many people rumored there was going to be 10 cores. No, they're still going to be maxed out at that sort of eight cores for the i9. And actually, you can get an i7 with eight cores as well. And Apple will give you the option of the six core i7, eight core i7, and the eight core i9. So there's not much on the CPU front when it comes to GPU. Considering that now they're sort of really on the limit with that 50 watt budget for the GPU, the Radeon Pro 5500 is already struggling to sort of fit in that 50 watt package. Could they go to a 5,600? Possibly, but they'll have to lower the clocks down and just increase the compute units maybe. That's a possibility, but I doubt it very much. So I do expect the GPU probably to be the same. It's a new part. The Intel CPUs are due a refresh. So yeah, that would make sense there. But the big deal is going to be that XDR display, mini LED, HDR. So I reckon this will be the first MacBook Pro to have HDR or a branded XDR display, which will be a big deal because now you'll be able to edit straight on a laptop HDR content with Macs. So that's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about my sponsor. And this sponsor needs no introduction. All the Mac gurus use this software, Mac Pause Clean My Mac X. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get a discount to Clean My Mac X. And this thing is a great app because it does so much. Not only cleans your Mac, it optimizes it. It protects you against malware. It not only just cleans your Mac, it helps you keep on top of everything. It's even got malware removal, privacy checkup, 
optimizations to make your Mac sing. What I particularly love about this is running the maintenance scripts. I used to use Terminal to do this. It uninstalls apps, checks if everything's up to date, checks extensions, helps you tidy up your Mac, finds all these old files that you haven't used for ages, and it will even securely delete your files. So if you really want to optimize your Mac, this is the software to get. Link in the description. Got a discount for you. So check out Clean My Mac X. And thank you to MacBoys for sponsoring this video. So what about my 16 inch MacBook Pro? How's that held up? What do you want to know? The good or the bad? We'll start with the good. Right now, it's my number one. I still think this is the number one laptop going around. This may change now with the XPS 15 coming out, of course, the new version of that. But currently, it's the best laptop on the market. And I review a heap of laptops and it is the best one. When you factor in everything, build quality, sort of, you know, display quality, color accuracy, battery life, performance, you know, it tops the charts with, you know, Adobe Suite, like Adobe Suite, yeah. And in the timeline, nothing scrubs like this in the timeline. And I'm talking about Adobe Premiere. And it's so smooth. It is like a desktop. It's like butter, like, whoa. All right, so let me set the scene for you here. 4K, color correction, LUT, everything. And have a look at this. Oh, whoa, 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 look at that. Butter, 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 butter. Nothing scrubs like this. This is 4K with the color correction. This is unbelievable. Played at full. And it's just like butter. It's just like butter. And yes, the trackpad helps with how smooth that feels, but only a desktop can scrub that good. And actually, I reckon it's even better than desktop. Whatever they've done with the Mac, they've obviously optimized it really well with Adobe software. You'd expect this on Final Cut. Also, amazing speakers. And it's one of the fastest rendering laptops with even Premiere Pro. You would expect that Final Cut, but even Premiere Pro. Now, actually, they did do an update to this where they're not exporting with the T2 chip in H.265 anymore. Now it actually uses the graphics card. So it actually, yeah, I don't think it's that much faster and it's just more nausea. So I don't know what it done that. I reckon they should have stuck to exporting H.265 with the T2. I'd actually love to roll back the update to see if it is actually faster. But, but you know, it takes me five, 10 minutes to do one of my videos. It's like amazing. It does have amazing performance and even 6K H.265 handles it better than most of the PCs with RTX 2070, RTX 2080s. It's just a really well balanced machine for size and that awesome 16 inch display is just amazing. You know, once you go big 16 inch, you don't want a smaller one after that. So and that's true. And I even compared this to an absolute beast laptop, the Aura 17. This thing has two 330 watt power supplies. So we're talking, it takes up to six times the power of what this MacBook Pro does. It is a 17 inch laptop. It has a 200 watt RTX 2080, 200 watts. It also has a CPU that does well in the 100 watts, like 150, 170 watts. It will destroy a lot of desktops in gaming, but this MacBook Pro scrubs better than that in the timeline. And that's not a joke. Also, it spits out scores, very competitive, and even beats it in content creation. And even stuff like SolidWorks, so 3D sort of stuff. So yeah, it punches well above its weight. It probably is my best laptop at the moment. We won't see what the XPS 15 and 17 are. Now, what about the bad points? Well, it clinks. This thing, when it heats up and cools down, it clinks. It makes clinky noises. The metal. You know when you turn your car off and you can hear tink, tink, tink. This thing does that. I've returned a few units. Like, this is probably my fifth unit. And, yeah, three of them I wasn't happy with. Ranging from coil wine. One of them had a dodgy trackpad. displayed like a flickering of the graphics and stuff like that. That ended up being Catalina, but at the time, I just thought they had a dodgy graphics card. Also, when you buy these MacBook Pro 16, you really have to check how bright the display is because the display brightness can vary from like, you know, 440 nits to 550 nits. So the panel brightness can vary dramatically, like we're talking 100 nits difference. This one here is quite good. It's quite bright. The ports get loose, you know, when you're sticking in USB-Cs 
in charge and I'm sticking things in and out. You know, it gets a bit loose, champs. You know what I'm talking about. It's what they said. We'll see how that holds up over time. I mean, I haven't even had it six months yet, have I? Sometimes when I lift the lid, there's some sort of noise and it's like the hinge isn't like 100% smooth. Whatever. I've got Apple Care. If it dies, it dies. And it still has that popping sound. Sometimes I'll be in Chrome and I'll just quit it and I'll get that pop. Now, they're supposed to fix that pop. It's still there. It's the T2 chip. They've patched that T2 chip up so much. And people say, oh, you should change your audio hardware or you're plugging this in the wrong thing. And that. No, this has got issues with that T2 chip. I'll admit it's getting better, but they're still patching that thing up. And you're still having issues like that popping sound. And if you don't know, the T2 does control the sound. And yeah, you still get T2 crashes here and there, but um, it's not like it used to be like a year ago. It's far and few between now. So overall, I'm very happy with this MacBook Pro 16. Is there anything else? Well, the keyboard lasted this long, so that's a good thing. And there's nothing really else to complain about. It's an awesome laptop. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.